Welcome back to All This Math. This is Professor Parker. And today we're going to do a math problem that you'll see on the elementary level, maybe like first grade, second grade, um, dealing with addition. And this is what many people call the new math. All right. Maybe it's a different way from the way we learned it, you know, learned how to do addition 30, 35, even 40 years ago. You know what I'm saying? This problem is a problem. It was a, it was a, a screenshot of a problem that, you know, of a picture of a child's homework assignment that one of my homeboys sent to me. And I was like, you know what? This is a good problem for me to do a video on. Because there's a couple things that I don't like about this problem in particular, right? And that I wanted to highlight. I want to talk about some things, right? Because sometimes parents be racking their brains, like trying to figure out like, oh, how do I do this? How do I show my child this? How do I help them with their homework? Sometimes there are some issues with the problem itself. Now, my, my opinion is that these instructions or these directions, I don't like the way they're written. The make a 10 method is an actual method, right? It's a method of doing addition, right? That introduces children to leveraging the base 10 system and creating, creating a, a 10, a value of 10, and then adding the leftover numbers. Because when you're adding from 10, it's essentially like you're adding from zero because when you have a 10, you got a zero in the ones place, right? But the make a 10 method, the way this is written, you wouldn't know that, right? If you don't know what the make a 10 method is, then you wouldn't know that. So what I might do if I wrote this assignment is I might put make a 10 in quotation marks or I might hyphenate make a 10, right? I might do something like that just to draw attention to the fact that make a 10 is an actual method. You know what I mean? Now, write a way to make a 10 to solve eight plus nine. Now, this is something that I teach my students at Cheney, right? In my math, my math methods course, right? Because I got I, I, I specialize in the new math because I have to teach education majors that want to become classroom teachers. I have to teach them how to teach the new math, right? And I use the term new math loosely because some people will make the argument that it's not new. It's just maybe something that we didn't see when we was in school or Maybe it wasn't taught in certain elementary schools or, or what have you. But anyway, I might do it like this, right? So if I'm doing eight plus nine, right? And I say, all right, I want to make a 10 with this eight. So I ask myself, what number do I add to eight to make 10? Two. I add two to eight to make 10. Now the question is, where is that two going to come from? The two is going to come from the nine. So what I got to do is I got to break the nine down into a two. And then you got to say, okay, well, two plus what equals two plus what equals nine? Seven. So you got to know some addition facts in order to do this. So you got to know that two and seven adds up to nine. So then I can make a 10 with the eight and the two. And that gives me 10. And then I got to add this seven that's left over. 10 plus seven. And again, if, you know, you're adding 10 plus 7, that's like adding 0 plus 7. 0 plus 7 is 7, and 10 plus 7 is 17, right? So that's one way to make a 10 to find this answer. So what I would write up here in these three spaces, because this is how the worksheet was set up. It had this diagram. I'm going to talk about all this too, all these black circles and red circles. I'm going to talk about all that too. I'm going to get into all that, right? But the three spaces should have three add-ins, because that's what they call the numbers that add together to reach a sum, they're called add-ins, right? So this eight, I'm gonna write that, that would be added to a two, because the two comes from the nine, you pull two out of that nine in order to make 10 with the eight, because eight plus two from the nine, right? That's what we got right here. And then what's left over is seven. So basically all that's happening here is the nine is turning into two plus seven. That's all that's happening. The nine turned into a two plus seven because nine is equivalent to two plus seven. All right. See, th th this type of stuff is like, it's not difficult, but if nobody showed you how to do it, then you look at it, you might not recognize how to do it. You might not be able to just look on the worksheet and just catch on. So don't feel bad about that. You know what I'm saying? Don't feel bad about it. But once somebody show you and walk you through it step by step, then you'll be like, oh, that's all you got to do? It's one of them type things, right? A lot of stuff in math is just like that. A lot of stuff in math we get frustrated about because nobody showed us how to do it. But then once somebody show you how to do it, then you're like, oh, this is actually easy for real. So 
That's what I'm here for. That's what this YouTube channel is here for. For you to be shown things in math so that the math will become easy for you. And if you're a parent trying to help your child, then you can feel confident and comfortable with helping your child. And you don't got to be yelling at your kids and all that, you know, and disrupting the peace in the household and all that, right? So, because I know how it gets. But, so the 8 is still 8 and the 9 becomes 2 plus 7, right? So then we got 8 plus 2, that's where we get the 10 from. And then that 7 that's left over, we do 10 plus 7, which gives us... 17 all right because zero plus seven is seven and ten plus seven you just have a one in the tens place now you still got a seven in the ones place either way if it was 20 plus seven it'd be 27 if it was 30 plus seven it'd be 37 if it was 40 plus seven it'd be 47 so explain that to your child make sure they understand that pattern the pattern is you got the same number in the ones place only the number in the tens place changes right whether it's a one in the tens place or a two in the tens place or a three in the tens place or a four in the tens place or a five in the tens place and so on and so forth. You know what I'm saying? Now, what about these circles? Now, these black circles represent the, this represents the original problem. This represents the solution to the problem, right? Or the final answer. The black circles represent the first add-in, which is eight, right? Look, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And these two spots are empty, right? Because this block is, it holds a maximum of 10 circles in it. We got eight and we're adding nine to that. So the nine is in red. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. This is the original problem, original problem. You see the arrow takes us to the worked out solution. So now what happened is we took two of these, right? And we put them inside. You see they right here, right? So we just made a 10. This is just a visual representation of how we made a 10. We had eight in black, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight in black. And then we took two of these from the nine to make 10. This is 10 right here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. And then look at how many is left over. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Or you could just count from 10. So from 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. So either way, we get 17. We get 17 either way. All right? Now, another thing we could have did, right? It doesn't follow the diagram that you see here or the visual representation that you see here, but we could have made 10 with the 9, right? Or we could have made 10 with the 8. We could have did this, right? We could have broke the 8 down, right? Let's say we had eight plus nine, right? So let's say this way we did it, and this is how I show, show my students using like a tree diagram, right? But we broke the nine down into two plus seven. So that, I, that way I could put the two with the eight to make 10, right? But what if I broke the eight down? I break the eight down into seven and one. Now, why would I do that? Because then I could put this one with the nine and that makes 10. And that makes sense. So that's another way to do this. And then I bring the seven down. And now I got seven plus 10. And seven plus 10 is the same thing as 10 plus seven. Because in addition, the order of the numbers does not matter. In addition, the order of the numbers does not matter. And that rule that says that is called the commutative property. The commutative property. Meaning that the order of the, mat, order of the numbers in addition and multiplication will not affect the final answer. It will not change the answer. So if 10 plus 7 is 17, then 7 plus 10 is also 17. So this is another way to do it. And this is, this is the make a 10 method. So whenever you have, whenever your child comes home with a homework assignment talking about make a 10, make a 10, all they're doing is you take one of the numbers. Basically, you want to you make, you want to add a number to one of the numbers to have a sum of 10. So you want to say 8 plus what equals 10? You say, okay, well, 8 plus 2 equals 10. Right. And then if your child, you know, doesn't know it off the top of their head, you can count with your fingers. You know, you say if I got eight and then I count, I got nine, then ten. How many fingers I got? up? I got two fingers. So that means that eight plus two equals ten because it took me two fingers up to get to ten. Right. I just made ten. Right. So then the question is, where am I get the two from, though? You gonna get the two from the other number, the other add in in the equation. Eight plus nine is your equation. Right. So I pull two from nine. I put the two at the eight. And this is how I wrote it visually, right? See the two? 
right? Two and, and then, but two plus what equals nine? Two and seven. Two and seven makes nine. This two goes with the eight, but the eight with the two, that's how you get the 10, all right? That's how you get the 10. And then that other seven is still left over. You're going to put that with the 10, 10 plus seven is 17. So, you know, this is just, this is the make a 10 method. So this is an important method for you to understand. Now, why? You might be thinking, well, why do I need to know this? Why do I need to know this? Well, what I would say is, it's very important for us to be able to mani manipulate numbers, right? It's very important for us to be able to manipulate numbers. If we can manipulate numbers, then we can understand manipulation. And we can also, and then this is a life skill, right? Because we want to understand when somebody is trying to manipulate us. And we want to be able to protect and defend ourselves from being manipulated. So if we know how to manipulate numbers and we understand how numbers can be manipulated, we can also understand how people can be manipulated. And if we understand how people can be manipulated, then we can protect ourselves from being manipulated by other people. So we'll know how to, we'll train our brains in order to develop a certain type of critical thinking, which will enable us to know, okay, that person is trying to manipulate me. They playing with me right now. And they don't think I, they don't think I dig it. They don't think I understand but this is why math is so important because math develops these skills within us. So you want your children to excel in math and become math scholars as really a, a defense mechanism. That's one of the many reasons why math is so valuable. That's what you really want, right? Because if you know how to manipulate numbers and how to move numbers around and break numbers down and reconfigure problems, then you also can see how that can happen to people, whether, you, whether it be you the individual or large groups of people. And if you see how it's done, then you'll be on the lookout and you can be aware and you can defend yourself and your community from being manipulated because you see how it's done and you learn how it's done from learning mathematics. So if you're wondering why we got to learn this new math, the old way is fine. Why can't my child just memorize that 8 plus 9 is 17? And your child should memorize the 8 plus 9 is 17. I'm not saying they shouldn't, but they should also understand how to arrive at that answer because... It takes some time for a lot of children to just memorize addition facts. I think they should memorize addition facts, but before they memorize them, they should also understand as a concept why 8 plus 9 is 17. They should be able to show it and prove it by doing smaller addition problems. So, you know what I'm saying? That's all I wanted to say. I just wanted to talk about this. My homeboy sent me the picture of the problem, and I was like, I was looking at it, I was like, yeah, this is a good problem. This is video worthy. This problem is video worthy. I'm going to do a video on this. So, yeah, so definitely... Um, practice this with your child, practice the make a 10 method and also shout out to HBCUs. Um, my HBCU was dope. I graduated from the national treasure, Morgan state university. Later I graduated. I got another degree from the Lincoln university. And now I teach at Cheney university. And like I said, I teach my students this, right? I teach a math methods course to education majors, young people that want to go forth and become classroom teachers. I teach them this method. All right. So they'll know how to explain it to children in the community. All right, so get some practice with this, and I'll see you all in the next video. Peace.